The Kepler mission was launched in March of 2009 with the objective of determining the fraction of stars in the galaxy that harbor Earth-sized planets that are potentially habitable. The Kepler mission was intended to be relatively inexpensive, and as a result, we used primarily off-the-shelf electronics. It's sort of a giant camcorder, so it's looking at a group of stars, taking images every few seconds, adding them up, and then sending those images back to us. Kepler doesn't discover planets directly, that is, by pointing a telescope in the sky and taking an image of a tiny dot of light. Kepler infers the existence of planets by measuring the brightnesses of stars very, very precisely, searching for the telltale dimming of light that happens when a planet in its orbit about the star happens to pass directly between the disk of the star and the telescope itself. We're doing that at about 170,000 stars simultaneously. So it's a big camcorder looking at a lot of stars continuously. And we don't change which stars we look at. Kepler has an enormous number of advantages over ground-based telescopes and Hubble telescope as well. Uh, basically, because if you're looking from the Earth, you have this day-night cycle. So half of the transits, half those dimmings, you won't see. And the atmosphere interferes as well. You only find the big planets. Earth-like planets, they simply cannot do. The Hubble Space Telescope looks at lots of different targets for lots of different astronomers. Its field of view is less than one fifty thousandth that of Kepler. Kepler looks at 50,000 times as many stars, if you'd like, at the same time. And he can look at it 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Kepler has seen over 4,000 indications inferring the existence of a planet. Prior to Kepler, we believed there were other planets around other stars. We believed that what we had in our, around our solar system was ordinary. What Kepler showed is, in fact, it was. We now know that there are probably more planets in our galaxy than there are stars. Every sun-like star is likely to have at least one planet. Even in the worst case scenario, you're still talking billions of potentially life-harboring worlds in our galaxy. As we understand life, Liquid water is a necessity. If the planet is too close to the star, it's too hot. If it's too far away, it's too cold. So the habitable zone is where it's just right. And it's important because that's where we believe life has the best chance of existing. So we know for a fact that we have found eight planets in a habitable zone. The most common type of planet that we've seen with Kepler is something in between an Earth and a Neptune. It's a, it's a mini Neptune, if you will. In fact, they might be planets made entirely of water. So you have ocean planets. And we're discovering all kinds of very exotic places. Uh, worlds that have molten oceans, you know, oceans of molten rock. Worlds that have not one, but two stars rising in the east and setting in the west. We are still analyzing, therefore, we expect new discoveries from the prime data. In the K2 mission, Kepler will do multiple pointings maybe four, four and a half per year. So in a two-year period, we might get eight to 10 different pointings around the sky, which means we have the potential now to discover planets orbiting very bright nearby stars. This is tremendously exciting because these will be prime candidates for studying not just the sizes of planets and their orbits, but now the diversity of their atmospheres. Kepler has opened the door to the next set of questions. Do these planets have atmospheres? What are the constituents of those atmospheres? Could those atmospheres support life? Is life on those planets? And perhaps is intelligent life on those planets? An enormous number of people have come together, each with their given specialty and expertise to create these scientific discoveries and to further our knowledge. Kepler has opened a window to show that planets are common throughout the galaxy. Now, when I look up into the sky and I see these pinpoints of lights, I don't just see stars, I actually see planetary systems. There could be a huge amount of life in the galaxy. It's not gonna be an empty place, a sterile place. It's likely to be full of life.